on this computer. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, November 27th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, it's me, the Wombat. Our guests today are the Dread Pirate Higgs from Western Canada. Welcome. How are you there? And the John Richards from England. Welcome. How the devil are you? Mm. Uh, doing quite well. Thank you. <laughs> Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you think that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us, the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. We'll tell you more about them after mid-show break, though. Uh, so stick around and join us on our, our journey today. Wombat, what is our topic today? Can you choose to believe? Which I am so shocked is not a classic song from the 90s or 80s. You think that the topic, the title is right there for the picking. Anyway, we're going to talk about belief, the nature of belief, and whether or not you can choose your beliefs. I'm sure we have all various points on the subject matter, but can we believe each other from the, our own little conversation? Anyway, before we get into that, I'll consider that our main course. Let's open up with a plate of pasta led by our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. Can I, can, can I request that the, the pasta comes with plenty of sauce? I don't like it too dry. Mm. All right. Uh -huh. That's one here then. Okay. Hail marinara full of spice. The flying spaghetti monster is filled with thee. Tasty art thou among sauces, and blessed is the fruit of thy jar, tomatoes, although fools believe them to be vegetables. Holy marinara, chief amongst toppings, Save us a plate for us now, and at about six o'clock when dinner is served, if you would be so kind. Run, 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 run. Run. Guys, going to try to stay on time today, and I'm going to go straight into the topic. Can belief be a choice? The reason why we're talking about it is last week we had a really interesting, uh, interesting discussion on the nature of belief, but we didn't have time to delve into it with the previous topic that we were already going into. So I said, let's save it for this week, and we'll talk and dedicate a whole show to the idea of, can we choose to believe things? Like, are we responsible for what our beliefs are? Are we culpable for it? And can we be held accountable for our beliefs based on choice, whether or not we chose them or not? Is it, it, it long story short, can we choose our beliefs? Now, I know this is going to be a sort of conversation where it's important that we have a meaningful vocabulary that we're sharing with all of us. So I say, let's start with a roundtable discussion by what we mean by belief. I'll start real quick. For me, belief is essentially whatever I'm convinced to be the case. I use the word belief as a shortcut to say, instead of saying, I am, I'm convinced that it is the case that blah, 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 blah. And so if I'm not convinced, I'm the, I don't believe it. If I am convinced, I do believe it. And there's some work that I can actually do to put in work to understand what I'm convinced and what I'm not convinced of. But uh, I don't want to play my hand too early, but I'll I'll throw up. How do you define belief, Dread Pirate Higgs? Talk to me. Well, I, I think belief is um, uh, supported by facts. So I don't think that uh, one comes to a belief artificially. Uh, they, they don't just pick and choose um, that beliefs are informed by by facts. And so uh, especially when you think about uh, people in their religious upbringings, those beliefs are supported by the facts that their culture or their parents or whatever are providing the, the, the groundwork for what their belief system is. Dred, um, can I ask, can I ask a yeah, question? Is it sure. possible to, if beliefs are supported by facts, is it possible to have an unfactual belief? Yes, of course. Yep, of course. So maybe instead because, of based on facts, because you can have a conclusion. Reality, What's that? Maybe instead of uh, based on facts, more like observations or apparent reality, like. Um, well, uh, based someone's... on premises, right? Okay, uh, premises, so yeah. Conclusions that... are drawn on the basis of premises. Yes. Uh, which are, you know, held to be valid, which would make the conclusion true, right? So, you know, if a person is 
told over and over again that that God is true or right. that these things point to the fact to the fact that God is true then the conclusion under whatever uh, those uh, that argument structure uh, then the conclusion seems to follow uh, from from those premises okay I just wanted to make the distinction that you're not saying that all beliefs are factual because they're based on fact you're right you're those right and that was a bad use of that factual. term sure. no sweat no sweat uh okay so belief could be based on premises as they lead you to a conclusion larry what do you think oh um, certainly i'd like to get back to what dread was saying though um I, I don't think so much that you start off believing in god is is that you start off believing that the, your soul will go on uh that there is an afterlife and then uh, for for you to have a soul in an afterlife there needs to be rules around it you know where will your soul go you know, and why, and what governs all of this. Uh, and then that will lead you to uh, belief in a God, because a God would be the person who created your soul in your afterlife and, and all this stuff. I think it's all really prem premises are based on uh, belief in the afterlife. And then I uh, believe in the goat of the soul. I mean, a God would, would kind of follow from that. But it's all, to me, I think it's all belief without facts. But again, you can say that the evidence is a fact. Um, uh, the Bible is a fact because it exists and has stories in it. You can certainly make that you, claim. <clears throat> and uh, you have people that you love and trust telling you that everything in the Bible is true, and that you should take it uh, on face value as true. And they tell you that from the earliest childhood and not give you any choice to disbelieve at that point. Uh, they disabuse you of your, uh, I mean, they tell you about the, the tooth fairy and Santa Claus and, and God, but they disabuse you of the first two and never do disabuse mm -hmm. you of the sec of the third one. Right. Larry, Larry, I love the soapbox, but how are you defining belief? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you when you say it? Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm with dread. It's a, it, belief is, or you, the belief is what you're convinced to be true. Uh, okay. You can okay. believe in good things. I mean, correct things, factual things, or okay. you can believe in things that aren't. It's whatever okay. you are convinced to be true. So it sounds so 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 far. It sounds like we're all on even ground so far. John Richards, would you agree, or do you have a different idea? He has a different <laughs> idea. Let's go. Let's throw a wrench into the matrix. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Well, you know how the word "gay" has changed its meaning in the last fifty years. Uh huh. It, it used I to have, mean. I'm. I am not. Oh, I'm the only person on this call who's not over fifty. So let's. All right. <laughs> well, it I'm has. Believe, believe yeah, me. Yeah, it, used yeah, mean, yeah. it used to mean sort of uh, jumping with happiness. It's, yeah sprightly and i'm aware and, of it um, changing over the last 10 years yeah yeah well, <laughs> okay but the thing is you see i think the word belief has has been changing it's not so obviously known as the difference of, as it is in the case of gay but you see 150 years ago we actually knew very little we didn't really know even how to find out very well in except in a few sort of uh, traditional areas we didn't we we didn't really know what evidence was we took we took all sorts of hints that might be supporting an idea a concept like stories about things like even poetry about things that we used those to reinforce our beliefs because that's all we had we didn't have much in the way of knowledge so we had to rely on belief now i think things have changed okay i, I think that now we have quite a lot of stuff that we can bank as actual knowledge and so i think those things do not need believing they are true whether we believe them or not and you gave at the outset ty you gave the uh, the description the definition that you have to be convinced by evidence in order to believe things well i, I take that a stage further i'd say that if you are convinced by evidence about something it's gone beyond the need for you to believe it it's, I see, I see, I see. So like belief is sort of just a transitionary step towards demonstrable knowledge. Exactly. In a sense. Well okay. put. Yes. It's, it is a stepping stone towards knowledge in the more modern context. And when I say I believe 
I can drive a car. It's like, I don't have to believe that. I know I can drive a car. Exactly. And you're saying I no longer need the word belief anymore. And I can actually reduce that. Is that what you're exactly. saying? That's okay. exactly what I'm saying. I want to explore it a little further because in hmm. order to be convinced by the evidence, hmm. you have to consider it. And sure. I'm saying these things, these concrete things do not need your consideration. You have to... I, I would love to hear Dredd. Uh, your thoughts on this and then i'll weigh in after it what, Dred, yeah I was, sure thank you thank you yeah um i was going to say that uh, uh i think belief maybe in john's uh, definition here is taking two forms one is the form of faith and the one is the form of belief and belief is carrying the weight of the definition of faith uh in in part in his definition here so I think that beliefs, so faith, of course, can be belief, but not justify true beliefs, right? Like it's not well, true. Hang on. Uh, just like justify true beliefs are those that are based on facts, which are supported by the evidence. And that faith, of course, is, like in Hebrews uh, one eleven, faith is the hope of things or is the... Uh, ev uh, what is it? Uh, substance something. of things hoped for. The substance of things hoped for. Seen. The evidence of things not, not seen, right? Right. Um, so some people Terrible world definition. Can, just, what's that? Just the worst definition possible to explicitly <laughs> put in your holy book. It yeah. sounds so fancy, but when you're like, wait a second. This it's is an oxymoron. Like, it's the worst. No, it's the most explicitly don't ask questions, just believe it without seeing it. Like that's yeah, your fundamental I mean, pillar of proof. That's so yeah, but it's like the first three words are faith is evidence. Right. That, that's exactly. not evidence. You know, yes. it's, it's terrible exactly. evidence. It is to evidence. It's just exactly. terrible, terrible evidence. When you have a standard, you want it's the worst exactly. thing ever. Sorry, Dred. Sorry, Dred. So no, no, I'm just trying to point out that beliefs are supported either by faith mm. or by evidence. Hmm. And faith is fake evidence, right? Where sure. it's not real evidence. So John. Yeah. John, I'm sure you have a rebuttal. Go on ahead, and then let me yeah. let me try to find the even ground, and then we can move forward. Okay, it's it's not quite a rebuttal. I want to agree with Dread hmm. that there are two sorts of belief. Hmm. There's you can you can use belief to mean that you accept something as true, and those things that you accept as true, like the existence of gravity, the force of gravity, you don't have to consider whether what might happen if you jump out of a roof window. You know. Because uh, and so I would say that the other usage of the word belief is where you have you're choosing, you're plumping to believe something like I believe this horse will win the race at 3.30 this afternoon. Sure, sure, and, sure. And that's sure. a different use of the word belief. That's where you've right. You're right. determined right. Yes. by your own force of will right. that right. you're going to accept that as a true thing. It's not just... Um, it's not just something which you don't need to worry about. Hmm. So in, in other words, that sort of belief is going to be doubtful. Yeah, or should be, or at least be, at least should be. I would say there are multiple uses of the word belief in English, which we know isn't the most clear language. In fact, it deals a lot with compromise. When I speak English, you're hearing sounds and you're making an interpretation of the sounds that I'm making. And hopefully that interpretation is the intent that I had when I made those sounds, but oftentimes they're not a complete crossover 100%. And so we have to make compromises compromises with our understanding. And we run into this weird scenario where we give one word, multiple meanings. Yeah. And, 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 and belief yeah, yeah. is one of the most heavily loaded words out there yeah. because yeah. in the religious sector, the scientific sector, layman talk, uh, adults talking to kids, kids talking to adults, belief can mean so many different things. And that's why it's important that we just clarify the beliefs. None yeah. of them are inherently wrong. It's just make sure that we understand where we're coming from so that way we can understand the intent of what we say. Yeah, and it's about. having a clear terms of reference, essentially, right? Right, because right. yeah. we can spend all day just that's going right, around because That's how many, so many arguments or discussions yeah. go awry uh, simply because people are talking past each other. Right. And that's just, just on the definitions of the... Yeah. Of those key terms right absolutely absolutely yeah. and so i think um oh larry did you have a hand no no go all right john go ahead go ahead it was me yeah well uh, my my preference 
<laughs> obviously I don't have any control over the meanings of words, but if I did, yeah. I would want to not use the belief, the word belief, for things which do not need consideration. You know, I would, I would say these things, the accepted sense of belief, where the, 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 the proposition, whatever it is, is very, very evidential yeah. and, yeah. and hasn't, been, hasn't been falsified in 150 years. I think those things are beyond the need for belief. So I, I would prefer to use belief for things that are dubious. Yeah, so like you can say, I have faith that blah, 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 instead of saying belief, because it seems like the stronger of the two. So people have adopted belief, but you'd rather have people say, I know it because I can demonstrate it to be the case. Yes, uh, Dred, I, I, don't you use, mm, yeah. I don't want to use the word faith. <laughs> right, yeah, so like knowledge yeah. and faith versus, rather than belief and, and obscuring the it, two. It's knowledge, yeah, because, and, knowledge and yeah, belief. I, yes, I and I think it's the, the, the word belief is used as a subjective acceptance of the framing of yes. whatever it is we're discussing. Well put. Well said. Um, well said. So when you say I know, uh, is that is that um, is that necessarily justified? You know? Yeah. Uh, because that that puts it outside of the realm of a subjective acceptance. Yes. It puts absolutely. it into a form, yeah. you know, a formal reality. And we can yeah, test which that. May not be accepted by other people. If I say I know French and I can't demonstrate that, then I don't know French, right? right. But if I say I believe for, uh, I in can French, learn French. As a... <laughs> <laughs> that's a subjective commitment. What does that mean? What does that mean? What are you saying? I'm just yeah. saying things that make me feel great. John, what do you think? Well, here's an example of a piece of knowledge that doesn't require believing. Uh, for example, if I know how to build a cabinet, okay, that, that's not a justifiable, it's not a JTB, a justified true belief, because it doesn't have any truth value. Nevertheless, I know it. You know, it's something that I know how to do. So it's a piece of knowledge mm. that doesn't require any belief. Uh, and I just want to make the point here. I'm fine with both usages of the term, but when I also find value in the statement of belief being something that I'm convinced to be the case. And so if you said, I know how to build a cabinet and you show me it, not only would I know that you know how to build a cabinet, but I'd also be convinced of the case that you can build a cabinet. I both believe it and have knowledge of it at the same time too. And they are two slightly nuanced different statements on the reality that I exist in. One, that I'm convinced that something is true and two, that I can actually test it and demonstrate it to be the case. Slightly nuanced and yes, they overlap a lot, but I feel like they are distinct enough in that definition <clears throat> to be useful. Dred, what do you think? Well, it, it's interesting because I've just, uh, one of the uh, philosophy books I'm, I'm just reading about is differentiating between different forms of knowledge. Hmm. So the knowledge say of building a cabinet is a know how kind of knowledge, whereas, other kinds of knowledge like that there's gravity or or that uh, the earth revolves around the sun or that we live in a galaxy amongst millions and billions of galaxies in a big universe that's a different kind of knowledge mm -hmm. that's a knowledge that's tested by empirical study and experiment and uh, observation and all the rest of it whereas know how i know how to breathe i know how to walk i know I how feel to like those can all be tested though like yeah, I, yeah, I know, but it, but it's a different kind of knowledge claim. Really? That's what I'm saying is that knowing knowing yourself how to do things is a different kind of knowledge than, uh, it, you know, other kind. I mean, there's different kinds of knowledge, I guess. There's different kinds of belief. Talk about know, of knowing how. I'm fine with that. What? Yeah, I'm you know, I'm open. Kind of I'm open to the idea that there's different interpretations of both belief and knowledge, and we can categorize them as such. Though I am interested in the main topic of today's show, which is, can we choose our beliefs using the two definitions that we talked about today, which we'll go into in the second half of the show. But the first section, just as a review, first review is belief can be something that you're convinced to be the case. Uh, it can be based on premises. Those premises could be factual or non-factual. And then the second idea of belief that we'll talk about and, and determine whether we're culpable and accountable for it is belief being used as a statement of faith when you don't necessarily have the evidence to demonstrate something to be the case, you can still have belief in it. Are you choosing that belief as well? And let's go into it in the second half of the show. At least let's get the top of the hour clearance out of the way. Okay. Go ahead, Larry. Uh, stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 
103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville for just a moment. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year, and we have over 1,000 members now. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top table or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. We also have Tuesday evening Zoom meetups. If you'd like to join us there, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com. You can also find us online at Facebook, meetup.com, or go to the website at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start one. one. That's right. Where do you want to pick up there, Wombat? <laughs> yeah, we're going to be talking about if you are responsible for what you believe. Can you choose your beliefs? Can you be held accountable for them? And uh, let's go into it. John Richards, what do you think? Yes and no. Ooh, I hate <laughs> on the fence sitting, but we're talking about different no, things. No, so no, 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 not on the fence. No, this is it's time dependent. Nice. I, my, my, <laughs> my, my position is when you're born, mm. you don't have any beliefs because no concepts have been explained to you since you don't have language. So there's no communication between the newborn and anybody who pre-existed. So you pick up a faith, for example, sure. in your youth as you are learning how to speak yes. because the, the language is wrapped up in whatever godliness your parents and the other carers around you believe in. So you don't have a choice of initial belief you're given it with language, okay? However, subsequent to that, <laughs> you can make a choice. When you get to an age of, um, in, when you get to an age of determination, you can, you can suggest to yourself that you want to give up the belief that you were foisted off with when you were a baby. And you can, or, or you can, you can choose to change it for another belief. So you can become an atheist, or if you're born into a Christian religion, you can become a Muslim, and vice versa. Second belief you can choose. Subsequent the second belief, belief you can choose. You can choose yeah. what to have faith in. You can't choose what you can be convinced to be a because the society that you're born in chooses that for you when you're a yeah. young kid, and it takes a lot of effort to get to take that out of you. Dread, what do you think? Well, uh, yeah. It, so I, again, like I was born, uh, I was born, I was raised Catholic. Right. Uh, I was born into a Catholic home. Hmm. Um, and over the years, um, the criteria by which I evaluated the claims of that religion changed. Right. And so I did not suddenly choose not to believe in God, but that I chose a different way of evaluating those claims yes and yes. that over time my belief in god was no longer supported by the claims based on the criteria for which i evaluated those claims and after a period of time then and it was actually years that i finally became or came to the belief that there is no god and no evidence to support the claims i want to so i want to i i gradually moved into a belief um, which becomes stronger and stronger. Of course, the same with pacifarianism. Right, right, right. You know, the evidence points in a different way, and I evaluate the claims uh, and how I evaluate the evidence uh, has changed over time to support my new belief. I want to hover on the idea of, of your, your criteria for evaluating claims improved over time. Well, it Can changed, talk, certainly, yeah. It, it definitely changed, but I would also say it became more rigorous maybe yes, a bit more evidential, a bit more reasonable compared to where when you were in your infantile state and you're absorbing information as people are giving it to you, you had a, you, you had a strength and criteria as you got older, where you're able to parse true things from false things in a very exactly. reliable way. 
Yeah. Um, just for the sake of argument, we call that epistemology. It is a word that's used to describe how we come to know things. And it is possible to have a bad epistemology where you just mm -hmm. believe whatever people tell you or disbelieve everything people tell you. Those are two bad examples of epistemology. Or you could have an epistemology where you say, I'm going to believe, try my best to believe as many true things as possible and as few false things as possible. But that requires me to have a criteria to assess claims as they're given to me and sort them appropriately. And if right. I make mistakes, I need to be able to self-correct that. And the <clears> things that I put in the false basket that were true, I need to put back into the true basket. I need to be able to have the humility to recognize where I'm wrong and correct it and improve my criteria as I go through life. That is a lifelong process. No one has a perfect epistemology, but we can work towards better ones. And it sounds like that's what you did, Dred. Is that accurate? That is accurate. And uh, uh, I'm trying to think of another word, doxastic, which uh, is sort of the framework, I guess, that uh your your evaluations are put within mm. and people can be closed doxastically which yes. uh, per, people of faith generally are where they're not open to new evidence that may contradict their beliefs right they're closed-minded open if you're open doxastically well then you are you've right. allowed yourself to say i cannot be 100 percent sure i'm 99 percent sure on anything which means that i can change my mind if the evidence bears it out. So now I have to ask you this because you you brought us here. Is a person who is doxast doxax oh geez, help me out. Doxastically <laughs> <laughs> closed. Yeah. Is someone in that closed-minded state of being, are they responsible for the beliefs that they had? Did they choose those beliefs? Can they be accountable for them? And can they choose not to have those beliefs? Yes. And that that's what I think is is really at the issue there, is that right. you can't choose. You can't choose. Right. It, it takes uh, time. It takes time. All right, uh, Dred, Larry, I saw you first and then John. I was just going to say that back when you were a believer, you couldn't have just chosen not to believe. That's correct. And now, and now that you're an unbeliever, a non-believer, you can't just choose to go uh, any more than you could choose to believe in Santa Claus right, or in right. the Tooth Fairy. Right. You can't do it anymore. Hopefully, hopefully you can't. You might, some people <laughs> might be able to, but that's the epistemologies that I'm talking about are on the weak side. John, what do you think? Well, you can... <laughs> there are some things that you can reiterate enough times until you are convinced yourself that they must be true. And there are some things which are simply not on the menu. I mean, I can't believe that I'm going to float upwards now mm. because it's, it's not available to me. Mm. So that, that's simply not available. It's, it's not, well, not on the menu is a good way of saying it. All right. I'm going to throw out uh, an example. Um, I got a cat and he's great because he can do tricks because I've always wanted a dog, but I didn't have the time to take care of a dog. So I got the best of both worlds, a cat that thinks he's a dog. It's fantastic, mm -hmm. but it's a cat. It's still a cat because I come home and he's like, pet me. And I pet him for like 10 seconds. He's like, I'm a cat. Leave me alone. I'm like, totally cool. I got other stuff to do too. So it's the best of both worlds, but I can still do this trick where I have a piece of food and I'll pretend to throw it. And he'll be like, He'll, he'll like chase after it, even though I've kept it in my hands. I didn't throw that piece of food. And in my head, it, I know he's thinking, he. I believe this guy threw a piece of food. I'm going to go look for that food, even though I know I did it. In my head, that is just an example of a poor epistemology, because I can do that over and over again, 100 times, and he'll still look for the food every single time. He believes, basically, without, uh, he. even though, oh, how do I, how, I'm trying to tie it together. Without, without evidence. Something. He's believing without evidence over a number of historical instances. He just wants to believe that there is food behind the couch or where's food at wherever I threw it to, even though he knows I, it, maybe, maybe I don't, I can't, I've never been a cat, but he basically is just constantly doing that same thing too. In the same sense, I could have a kid see a magic trick, a kid who see the first magic trick in his life and I can pull like an ace of spades out from behind his back of his ear. That kid might be convinced might be convinced of the case that I can actually do that magic trick and be like, that guy pulled that card out of my ear. But these are these are examples in my head of like a poor epistemology being used, something that you could be tricked of as an infantile state, May people who might have other agendas in mind. Dred, I see you raising your hand. Go ahead. You want to throw something in on here? Yeah. Well, isn't it American Turkey Day coming up? It's already been the case. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought Black Friday was the, the, the day after or the it's the day after thanksgiving so this is a oh, great okay okay here's a here's a great example about all right all right keep going to go to you okay turkey 
yeah. gets fed. Yes. And next day he gets fed again and he's taken into a special pen. He gets special food. Third day, same thing. Same thing over days and days and a couple of weeks. He comes to a gradual belief hmm. that he is special in the farmer's mind. Okay. But that's something he holds in himself, right. which is not necessarily justified uh, based on the short amount of uh, time that he's been in this special position. That turkey chose to believe that. He No, he didn't choose to believe it. it he came to that belief because day after day after day after day, he his belief or his growing belief was supported by the regular occurrence of him being a special, getting special treatment from the farmer. Okay, okay, okay. So he comes to believe that and comes to an expectation that every day will be followed by another great meal from his farmer buddy, who's his best pal, until that one day when he is on the table. Doesn't work out so well. Doesn't work out so well. <clears throat> it doesn't John. work out. But th this is it. If it had only been one day, that turkey would not have a sudden expectation that he was going to get treated well. Okay. It is built up over time by a series of events that repeat themselves. It's induction, right? It's inductive sure. reading. And sure. so beliefs are supported by induction. John? Yeah, I agree as well. John, what do you think? I, I think that turkey needs a lesson in critical thinking. And <laughs> Yeah. And, and your your cat has too much faith in you, Ty. Yeah. <laughs> let me let me let me finish this point out though. Uh, I could do one magic trick to the kid the first time, pull an ace of spades out of his ear, and he can either choose to believe that it was a trick or choose to believe what I tell him, which is I just did this thing where I pulled a card out of your ear. He can choose either way, and just based on the phenomenon, the experience that he just had, he might choose to believe that I have magical powers that can pull cards out of his ears. An adult can still rely on faith by choice if they're doxaxically closed and don't want to have anything challenge their faith. I've had conversations with people in my science class who are like, I hate what this teacher is saying because it's making me question my religion. I'm just not going to take this class anymore. And I'm like, you made that choice? That happens. That happens in a scholarly setting as well. But yeah. I, I hold those as people who can choose what they believe, believing in the sense being what the environment has given them as an option. And maybe that was the only option that they were given. And that's the one that they have. It's tied to their ego. It could just be a lack of information or it could just be, I choose to believe the cooler answer, cooler of the two answers, because sometimes the truth isn't very cool. And so they'll believe the card comes out of the ear rather than, oh, it's just a sleight of hand trick. It's like, dang it. I like the cooler explanation better. Um, but I also believe that people cannot choose what they believe. I have this as an example where, Dredd, as you were saying, you were raised Catholic. I'm sure the transition from Catholic to atheism has caused divisions maybe in your family or stress in the means of how you think about the reality and realizing how much time you invested in something that wasn't true and the people who still continue to peddle those falsehoods it makes you distrust them even more and think about what society is like in general that causes a lot of paranoia a lot of people who leave religion have that uh mindset or yeah, have to sure. go through that period and it would be so much easier if it was just no wait a second i am a christian i'm just gonna I want to be a Christian because I'm in the best political group to be a Christian in. I'm in the best country to be a Christian in. Why would I give that up? Why would I give it up? And I find like I can't convince myself to be a Christian, even if I want it to be the case, even if I want to believe, because I don't have a criteria that is satisfied by the premises that are presented by Christianity. Mm. And so mm, I stories have in a book wouldn't do it. Exactly. Mm. And so I have a position now where I cannot choose to believe in <clears throat> Christianity I'm stuck <laughs> being an atheist. So, <laughs> yeah, and that's probably the, the very means of how you evaluate the evidence I'm, that supports the claim, right? Yep. Exactly. I'm just a guy that wants a reliable way to reach conclusions. And if you can present me a reliable way to reach the conclusion that a God exists, I will happily take it. Otherwise, I'm stuck with I don't know, and that's or I don't believe that's the case. And that leaves me with agnostic atheism. I'm totally fine with that because that's the intellectually honest position to be at. Mm -hmm. that's in my head a thing that i cannot choose to change you have to convince me otherwise because i have an epistemology that has a criteria that's high enough to to block falsehoods from getting in if i re reduce it too low 
I'll start believing in magic cards and my cat, I'll be like my cat who, who I can just keep tricking over and over again. I don't want to have that kind of life. I want to have a high standard of uh, evidential claims. And that is the reality that I want to meet. And it shouldn't be high enough that a God couldn't meet it, but it should be very telling that a God hasn't hit it yet. If he also yeah. wants me to be convinced of the case. And I just wanted to qualify one thing you said there. You said that you want to believe as many true things as possible. Matt Dillahunty, of course, made and as many fall and as few false things as possible. Exactly. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. John, John Richards. Yeah. Well, well, again, you've you've delved into the concept of time here, because yes. um, indoctrination starts young. Yes. Uh, if you try and indoctrinate people in their mid twenties, you have a difficult task. But the longer that you have accepted that indoctrination and the more it's been reiterated in your mind, the more times you've said your prayers every night, the more times you've fasted on the Friday or whatever the regime is, then the more you've invested in it and you get older in your life and it's harder then to think, oh, my God, I've been a fool all these years. Right. Yeah, you don't want to admit it. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, and and I, I agree with uh, John on that, that people believe that's true. Um, but, uh, you know, some uh, like the and supported by the sayings like uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Um, but, uh, you know, again, that's a, just a matter of whether or not you, you want, want to. Yeah. If, if that's the time convince yourself that you can do it and then right. therefore believe that you can right yeah. i'd well, also I, say uh, just to add this in a uh, vulnerable people are very easily targeted for these kinds of indoctrinations yeah. and i have seen people in our graduate school course in their 20s mid-20s come in but they're from a different country and realize i'm trying to get a green card here i'm trying to be a good student you know what i'm just going to go gung-ho america i'm, I'm going to say ah screw my old country i'm going to come up with the american flag i'm going to start learning how to shoot guns i'm going to eat i'm going to gain like 40 pounds eating bad junk food i'm like why are these all american <laughs> things that's so terrible but i've seen people in a vulnerable state be easily indoctrinated by uh nationalism uh mm -hmm. prejudices um dogma there's no shortage of what can be happening and the fact that it can happen to us as a kid should be an indication that this could still happen to us unless if we improve our standard of reasoning mm. Yeah. yeah, well, that's where I wanted to come in because, and by the way, I love your stereotypical American. <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I have that in writing? <laughs> sure, go for it, go for it. What I, what I wanted to say is that these people who do fall foul of that sort of belief, they need better criteria. They're, 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 of course. They, they are taking narrative as if it's evidence, and it right. isn't. <clears throat> they, they need to know what repeatable observations by independent observers in different locations at different times actually means you know mm. that's important stuff and taking somebody's word for it listening to an anecdote right. that's not important right yeah well, Even, you, you know and this is one thing that that really makes people gullible that that word gullible fits people who don't have robust criteria yes for evaluating yeah. evidence. Yeah. That's why rich get rich quick schemes uh, are all over the place that there are so many scammers out there because yeah. it's take, people taking advantage of the fact that people mm. don't have sound or robust epistemic, uh, epistemological reasons for uh, yeah. believing the things they do. They believe there's a such thing as a free lunch. So yeah. uh, there's a free lunch. <laughs> I don't have to do everything. I can get everything. And that's how people get suckered in because they believe these things. I really want to hear what Larry has to say on this because I don't. I don't well, know I think we're is. we're missing uh, uh, an element of laziness here. Um, <laughs> I love it. Studying, that's exactly what I meant. Studying uh, and learning the scientific method and reading a lot of books to know the subject well and gathering information mm -hmm. from various knowledgeable people is hard and yeah. it's time consuming. But if you can take one book, know it really well, and right. say that all the other guys are just wrong, right? You no, know, right. that's very easy. It's, it's an easy path to follow. Right, it is. And a lot of people get taken in by that easy path. And so, nationalism is one of them. But there's right. also the idea that it's similar to la laziness. It is also a desire by people to look like 
their self or be important mm-hmm. or to be valued. And it's it's not just gullibility and laziness. It's the same people who buy a designer watch that tells the same time like every other watch, but it costs four thousand dollars because they want people to see that they have this expensive watch or an expensive car. It's mm-hmm. advertisers who are marketing to people who want to have an inflated sense of importance and they can target those people as well. And what greater marketing team or propaganda team is there than Christianity, which is Absolutely. now your father and best friend is the creator of the entire universe. Get that <laughs> exactly. little diamond. The Christ all cross. powerful one. Yeah, yeah. You know how much Jesus loved crosses. He's going to come down and be like, oh yeah, I love crosses. High five. Those <laughs> things are great. Yeah. Fill that yeah. with diamonds. Yeah. That says me. That's all what I'm about. It's yeah, the yeah. marketing behind it, and we're just as sub, sub, we're just as susceptible to that as we are to what sodas we drink, and you know the things that we believe to be true. We have to recognize yeah. that even in our adulthood, we're very vulnerable to that. Yeah, sure. and and, it, and and it's quite funny too that uh, the um, that you know Christianity teaches humility, but of course it's the antithesis to what is actually being claimed here. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm the personal favorite of yes. an all powerful being. Yeah, how, how is that in any way humble? <laughs> right, right. That's what I'd like to know, John. <laughs> well, I, w- I was wondering whether you would like to add exploitative to your list of stereotypical American characteristics. Okay, what do we got? <laughs> <laughs> Exploit, exploitative, and gullible, and gullible. And what is it? Lazy. Lazy fits in pretty well, too. All right. Um, and yet we win all the gold medals. We have drones on Mars. Like, it's just a great, it's a great spectrum, America. It really is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I will throw this out. Are we responsible? All right. That was the main meat of the question. I heard from John Richards that it's time dependent, that over a period of time, you can say, yes, you are. And I would say, yes, I would be less inclined to punish or or hold accountable a child who was born in a christian household who believes the same thing his parents believes that's very rough in fact i just blame the parents for like passing on their indoctrination to their child but even if they did it parents can do that in their best in what they believe to be their best interest for their kids because they've never gone through their own steps and it's such a traumatic process to get that child who's in religion out of religion and back in a more reasonable mindset and it's better for the community when they do it as well um I, but i would say this i wouldn't hold them accountable for what they believe after at um uh, at that age and then at a certain point i would say yeah if you know what at a certain point i would say you can be more culpable culpable when you are explicitly using faith as you define it in your book as conviction without evidence conviction without the things unseen conviction and things that i just hope to be the case if that is explicitly your rule set for why you believe things are actually the case, then yes, you are culpable for what you believe to be true. Because at that point, you are explicitly not using an evidentially or evident evidence-based mindset or outlook. And you're actually doing it to what you may not notice, but the actual harm of the community that you are participating in, whether yeah, yeah. it's how you determine how meetings, political meetings in your board begin, or who you elect in office, or what uh, taxes you choose not to pay because you decide your uh, tax exempt state when it's only when it's convenient for you, or subjugating other people of other different belief systems because you have the preferential based one because you have the institutional places of power. Like these fringes that you put into society are your fault and you should be held accountable for it. And so I don't blame atheists for being atheists. I blame Christians for being Christians. <laughs> I blame the well, religious people for holding on to it, specifically I, only because of the faith definition. What do you yeah. think, Fred? Yeah, I, I would say that, <clears throat> and that's why law has to remain secular. Right? Yes, yeah. Um, that is that is the important thing when determining a person's culpability. Yeah. Because, you know, a, a person could be, you know, as we said, doxastically closed, where where you know critical thought cannot penetrate right and you know not everyone ever gets there you know Mm. never opens up doxastically they could be uh you know staunch whatever religious belief until the day they die right the fact that their culpability is not something that has really anything to do with their religion it has more to do with the secular law and that's why i i think it needs to be kept secular because it's an outside view of what the beliefs are it's independent right. of what the belief right. is right 
and I, I think that's, I think that's the real line to this dread because it's important to be doxaxically open. It's important to be open-minded and it's only when you're closed-minded that you become the accountable party for what you believe to be true. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm a very open-minded atheist. It's just a question of, can you please present me enough extraordinary evidence for me to reach that God claim? No one's done that yet, but I'm open to it, but it's not going to look like a book or a tweet. I'll make you a pastorian, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and I wear my I wear my hat when I go putting and it's been working out pretty well. Larry, I would love to hear your train of thought. Do you think that we are responsible for what we believe? Do we choose our beliefs? No, we don't choose our beliefs. I think <clears throat> that in this day and age when we can get on the internet and uh, we're presented with all kinds of evidence from every direction, uh, we we can choose to believe maybe and this set of evidence and that, but it's usually because of uh, what we want, you know, how we, how we perceive that we want to live our life in the afterlife afterlife or whatever. But uh, I don't think that uh, like, I don't believe that belief is a choice. You can't just rationally choose to believe something. Um, You can uh, choose to entertain this set of beliefs versus that set of beliefs because of, uh, um prior mindsets uh, from your uh, upbringing but no i think that uh, in today's uh, age you choose not to hear something or not to accept yes. something you can um, choose to be closed-minded is right what but, it is. Yeah. but as far as just switching your belief from one thing to another no i don't yeah. think that it, you you can totally choose to be closed-minded and operate under a very poor epistemology such as faith right? Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. work with whatever that system gives you. And if that's the case, you're responsible. Like you should be held accountable for that. But you can yeah. also be open-minded and start with a improper belief or unfactual belief and maybe improve it over time. And that is open to whatever your rigor and, and experience and culture that you're around can influence it. But hopefully, and what we see more often than not, is people who are open-minded and work on objective tests to determine if things are true or not true, end up at the exact same point, right? Com- uh, on like a reasonable scientific basis, like a demonstrable real, real world view compared to mm-hmm. those who stay in their closed dogmas and and, and believe in a fractured bif- uh, bifurcation of many different aspects of the same dogma that you know evolve over a period of time. It's just crazy. What is my takeaway here? Uh, Dread Pirate, I'd love to hear final thoughts oh we well that's right that's right we're not over time we have like about 15 more minutes left oh. i would mm-hmm. i'd like to get this i'm going to pull up some comments that were posted on a similar uh conversation about whether or not it's possible to believe and choose well, what you oh choose what you believe go ahead dread go ahead john while you do that while you find the comments i'd like to offer a bit of advice go for it <laughs> if if Mac. If you <laughs> no, if if you um, if, if what you are being offered is something that you want, <laughs> be very skeptical. Yes, because, because you could be being tricked into wishful thinkianity. Yes, you always ask people like, "I believe in God." Yeah, like, do you do you want to mm-hmm. believe in a soul? Do you want to believe in the afterlife? Do you want to believe that there's a God that's looking over you? And the most. And the most sincerely sad thing about it, not to go into this small tangent, but like everyone believes that God is their father, right? But he was also their father's father too. Like their father probably believed that, but no one ever wants to believe God's their grandpa. And the thing is their grandpas also believe that God was their father, but no one ever wants to believe God was their great, 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 great grandfather. Cause that yeah. doesn't have as much power as the father. So you have generations of people who keep thinking consistently that God's their father. But like, if you just thought about that, there's a great stand-up joke in there somewhere. You know, and and the same true is uh, for certainly in in North America here in Canada at least hmm. uh, uh, of uh, Native Americans um, who compress uh, their closest relatives with their oldest relatives into ancestors. Yes, and then it becomes just more like this yes. a nebulous, a nebulous being right. of belief, uh, which ties them immediately to their their most recent. Uh, uh, and uh, ancestors and they're most distant and that's why they say well we've been here for ten thousand years so get off our land okay yeah, but, but, and soil. but, but ten thousand years ago what did your ancestors know eh? and what was his how name much, how much <laughs> did they know 
They were ignorant. Yeah. We've learned a lot in 10,000 years. Yeah. So Larry, first question to you from downtown command. Um, I believe that it is, I believe that belief is a choice. Belief is a choice because you can believe in nonsensical fairy tales with zero evidence to support them. So basically what he's saying is, hey, it doesn't make it true, but you can believe in things that aren't well, true. Well, his, his nonsensical uh, fairy tales are, yeah. are somebody else's truth. I mean, they're not going to yeah. call them nonsensical fairy, fairy tales. You're talking about someone who has serious religious beliefs and they were in, inculcated at, at the earliest um, childhood. Right. Um, they don't consider them ridiculous. Right, uh, right. They think, were always told by the people they trust most and love in the world that they're true, and they believe it. I mean, it's, but the they point actually is, believe it. But that is the point. They believe in things that aren't true, and people can do that. And that's what he's making the point. It's like, believe yeah, can be but ask the, you're believing ask in things that aren't true. Who, who, who uh, sent this question in? Uh, downtown Command 295. Well, ask him if he thinks that those same people can just choose not to believe that. So here would be my thing. If you are convinced that something is true at a point when you don't have the faculties to properly assess it with a, with a modern or intelligent or an informed criteria for evaluation, I don't think you're the one that chose it. I think someone chose it for you. And they simply pushed that into your mind state. That is indoctrination. And that's why I'm on the same page with John where it's like, that's abuse. That is not your fault. And I feel like when you're growing up older with these bad right. concepts, mm -hmm. you have ownership of them, but those weren't yours to begin with. Those are things that yeah. were force fed to you. Don't, you're not a bad person for getting rid of them. And so for yeah. people who need to transition out of religion, it's not your fault. It's truly the system that you're in. It may not even be your parents' fault explicitly, but like Guys, it's the I'm system that you got trapped up in. Go on, I'm John. Gonna, I'm gonna have to quit on my face. Yeah, <laughs> your background's flying all over the place. All Thank right. you so much, John. It was great having you on. Was it, we'll see you at 11. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two Wonderful. reasons. One thing is I'm being attacked by a child. No sweat, no sweat. And the other is I have to go and fetch her father. So, Dread, I got a question yeah. for you I, from the just, Can oh, I just promote it. Free Thought Channel? Because yeah, go for it, go for it, go for it, John. Yes, yesterday we had a great chat with um, Rosa. Watch out, Rubio. watch your eye, watch your eye, watch your eye. Don't turn around, don't turn around. <laughs> Rosa Ruby Condio, take a look at that. With uh, his name is Bill Helmslow, and it was a great chat we had with him. He's a creationism and um, in intelligent design debunker. You'll cool. love it. Cool. Okay, sounds right. good. Bye bye. Thanks. Yep. Dread, I want you to take the next comment from our Satanist friend who is sure. called Going to Hell 477. <laughs> Going to Hell 447 says, so what if you can choose to believe or not believe? It doesn't make anything true. Belief doesn't make anything true. What do you think about that comment? Well, that's absolutely true. Yeah. <laughs> and I believe it. You know, the weird thing about Satanists <laughs> is I rarely hear them say things that I disagree with. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, and I guess just to keep pushing the point, uh, hmm. you know, when the vaccinations for COVID 19 came up, right. Um, it wasn't like suddenly people, you know, all of a sudden believed that, uh, you know, it would cause autism or, or uh, that Bill Gates had a, a chip that he was trying to insert into you. These are, you know, the idea of vaccinations came up and then you started hearing things and whatever sort of support, whatever was supported by your own sort of internal epistemological uh, machinery um, was how you were swayed one way or the other and that all of a sudden you know you were listening to uh wakefield on his autism stuff and uh and what's the guy on uh, fox news uh uh tucker carlson and and uh and donald trump it, all of a sudden your your inclination was becoming supported by a growing number of things that you were inclined to accept as reliable and as good sources of information. Right. And then eventually you come to a, a, a firmly held belief that vaccines have this negative impact on you. Right. It's right. not something you just mm -hmm. woke up and said, you know what? I don't give a shit about, 
I don't give a, okay. a, a darn about uh, uh, about uh, COVID nineteen or, or vaccines. I just I'm not going to take it just because it has Great to be point. supported by the claims or whatever you think is evidence in support of the actual belief. It's just not by itself. Dread, I love it. That was those are great final thoughts. Where can we find your stuff at? Uh, well, I'm live streaming this still at uh, 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time uh, on um, on the West Coast here, uh, Sunday mornings. Uh, my channel is Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-E-Y-R-A-T-E. Nice. nice. And like cool. all things, belief is a conditional statement. It's based on what you mean by it, whether or not you're culpable for it or not. Mm -hmm. But I like to believe that it's always good to have a good epistemology. The stronger that you have it, the better. You can never have too strong of a, of a, a standard for evaluating claims. And it tends to be the case that the stronger you have it, the less likely you are to believe in falsehoods, which is a good thing. Uh, and have to and have to remain doxastically open and staying open-minded. Yeah, you can't have a good epistemology if you're in any way doxastically closed. So you got to be open-minded. You have to be willing, like science, to correct mistakes that you've made in the past and always strive for a better, approved system to know true things and false things. Uh, you can find myself at Let's Chat on YouTube. That's about it, Larry. Why don't you take us out? Okay, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button. For radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject, my YouTube channel is at Doubter5. And remind, uh, reminding everybody to keep their mind open, but not so open their brains fall out. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are <clears throat> real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Say bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Rob, man. And that's a wrap. All right.